Charlie, I'll come to you. Let's talk Weston McKinney. Juventus is playing on Monday at home against Samp Doria. And actually, they're away to Samp Doria. It looks like McKinney is slated to start in the midfield with Zachariah and Locatelli. How are you feeling about uh, him? And, and how did you think he did in his first game of the season? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see him back on the pitch. Uh, Sampdoria lost to Atalanta uh, 2-0 the first game. They're at home, so they're they're not a, st- a strong team. Um, so I think in this match, I think Juve, after coming up with a 3-0 win against Sassuolo, uh, they feel that they're going to continue to keep pushing. And for McKinney, he, he got great minutes. He's still not anywhere near sharp. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I think this is an opportunity for him to – to start to continue to make make a, a name for himself in that midfield and and for Weston to do that I think what what the I think what separates him from most of those players is yes he he's he mixes up he's physically um d- dominates the midfield but he also gets in the box he 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 has a real knack at the timing part of making those late runs on a midfield getting the box for set pieces or corners. Mm-hmm. So if he can get on the score sheet or, or get involved uh, on a couple of goals, um, I think that will do him a, a world of, of good for his confidence. Yeah. Juve beat Sassuolo last week, three zero Vlahovic scored uh Di Maria scored Di Maria gets hurt. So he's going to be out apparently for the next 10 to 14 days. And we'll see how that changes the team a little bit. Cause I thought Di Maria looked really, really sharp. And now if, if McKinney comes inside, they got Philip Kostic. I don't know if you guys saw that or not from Juventus or that from Eintracht Frankfurt, who helped uh, wore the number 10 shirt for Frankfurt as they won the Europa League last year. He can play a bit of a wing back. So maybe an option. He came in for Alexandro in the latter part of that game against the Swolo. And if he's in the team, I think that allows McKinney to maybe pinch a little bit more centrally and maybe not be as wide as that McKinney kind of started at least uh, that game against the Swolo. So we'll see how he sets up and how he plays into into. Your point, uh, Charlie, it seems very interesting that he started, but how are you going to be more sharp in the second game now that he's got some minutes under his belt? So obviously, very curious to see how he performs and and against the Sampdoria team. That's a bit of a tricky fixture at times. All right, let's go over to the Bundesliga, Heath Pierce. Uh, we got uh, Ricardo Pepe. We got Jordan Pifak. We have Joe Scally. Let's start with Joe Scally because he's actually been really solid. For Borussia Mönchengladbach and their new coach, Daniel Farka, uh, they're home to Hertha Berlin. Now, they gave up a late equalizer last weekend to Schalke, which cost them their second straight win to start the season. They're currently in third in the Bundesliga. Now, Hertha conceded 71 goals last year, which was not very good. And then you have Gladbach, who gave up 61. So there's probably some goals in this one. But Joe Scali's been quietly solid throughout. And I wonder if he continues to start and play regularly and be consistent in his performances, if he will also get called into the September one. Cause for me, he's still, he's still on the fringes, man. Uh, but if you, if you're playing, I, I Gladbach is a massive club. And, and if you're playing consistently and, and again, it's circumstantial, right? Stefan Lehner is, is back and he's on the bench. I'm not sure why he's not playing. I know he's a little bit older in age. I think he's close to 30, 30 years old and and is is the is considered the sure starter when he is fit and healthy, but he's been on the bench. Maybe they're just taking their time, but clearly there's a trust in putting Joe Scally on the field without having that option. Because if you if you didn't trust him, you would just put Stefan Lehner in who's passed all the fitness tests. He's capable, he's 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 able to play and go 60 minutes and then put Joe Scally in. Joe Scally continues to get the starts. If he starts again this weekend, I think they're certainly continuing to build a story for him and his development. And you, you, we've all done it, right? Where you come in first in the national team, maybe you're there, maybe you're not. You come in for a camp, maybe you're there, maybe you're not. And and to continue, like like Charlie just said a few minutes ago, of keeping that door open and forcing your way back into the team. Now, it's easier to do that when you're a goal-scoring striker to force your way into a team. But for other players like him, when we look at our depth chart, I mean, it's it, it starts to create a real opportunity for Greg Berhalter if Joe Scally is an able backup in one mm-hmm, or two spots mm-hmm. with a left back or right back, knowing that you've got some depth or coverage there and a little bit of comfort knowing, you know, you go back again to my, my own experience in 2010, of course they weren't going to take a, a second left back who at the time only played left back. Cause you've got DeMarcus Beasley that could play there. Carlos Bocanegra ended up playing there behind with, with, um, with um, Johnny Bornstein. And so you have, it, it allows you to focus your time and energy on other positions that might allow you to bring another midfielder or another center back or another right back or I'm not a right back, but another position if you have depth of a player like that. So I think it only helps his cases that he's playing. The reports continue to say that he's going to be a backup throughout the season. But as of right now, he's getting minute, minutes and, and the team's doing well. So why not? Yeah, I mean, given how you're explaining Joe Scally, I think James Sands kind of fits that as well. And 
he started against PSV Eindhoven, the Champions League qualifier for Rangers, as did Malik Tillman. Uh, Rangers do have a game this weekend, but I could see both of them being rested because they're going to take that 2-2 result, which I think they have to be disappointed with. Even though James Sands didn't have anything to do with the two goals that were scored for PSV to go down to Holland and get a result, we can get into those two in a little bit. Let's talk about Jordan Pifok with our resident number nine, Chuck Wagon Davies here. He only had 30 touches in total in their last game, Union Berlin's last game against Mainz away from home. It was a 0-0 draw. Union Berlin still undefeated in the Bundesliga two games in. And apparently this columnist that I read about PFOX said that he, this is a quote, frustratingly lax in some cases with regard to pressing. And I was like, ah, that's not what the columnist went out. Like, <laughs> talked about, honestly, talked about the whole team and went out of his way to say that PFOX was, quote, frustratingly lax in some cases with regard to pressing. I'm like, that is not, I hope Greg Verhalter doesn't see that article because well, you know, that's the one thing that's working against him. I know, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. know. So, so I'm curious because Union Berlin are at home against RB Leipzig. It's going to be a great test for him. For people mm -hmm. that don't follow Union Berlin, they, they sit in a 3-5-2 and, and he's one of the two strikers, which is something we don't play with the national team. So I'm kind of curious systematically if that's going to help his cause to work with us as well. And then if he's not pressing, that's definitely not going to help his cause. Charlie. Well, I, I can tell you one thing. If there's ever a, a caption that, that fits a player better, um, <laughs> can't dribble for nothing, then, <laughs> uh, then I don't know what we're, who else we're talking about. Um, well, those t-shirts now are going to have to just have names on them because it's yes, the same quote that's funny. for a lot of players. <laughs> he can't dribble for nothing. Uh, in the form of his life, but can't dribble for nothing. He, he He's very limited in in what you get with, with PFOC. I mean, yes, big striker, gets in the box, but he's never going to dribble. He's not going to press. Um, or, and if you try to dribble, it's like get the ball off his foot right away. Mm -hmm. he, he's not a, a good pressing striker. So Ultimately, if you're talking about a late substitution because you can just whip balls in and you need a target, then sure. But that's not what you're looking for, especially in a World Cup. You don't have that luxury of just saying, hey, uh, we need a, a striker just for 10 minutes who can be a, a, a nice predator in the box. No. So um, he, he just he has to continue to improve. I mean, that's why he made the move to the Bundesliga to say, hey, if I can score 20 plus goals in, in this format, and improve on my game because I'm going to have to to stay on the pitch. Then that's that's where he will make a name for himself and, yeah. and get an opportunity with with Greg. I, I think you're right. I think these performances, and I think we did it as well when we were players trying to get into the national team, where we have performances with our club teams that are, that are calling cards. Oh, but but I did. I played well against X, you know, and I played well against this particular player that you're also looking at, who's also in the national team player pool. And those are big moments. And this is a big one, I think, in particular for Jordan Pifok. Very similar to Tyler Adams and Brendan Aronson in Leeds overall against Chelsea. You're starting to go up against some of the world's best players, some of the world's best coaches, some of the most organized teams that are playing in the Champions League regularly. And if you can hold your own and do it against those guys, and I think that's, from a coaching perspective, I can start to trust that guy because I know he's got that valuable experience that when he gets to the highest level, he'll be comfortable in certain situations. And I can ask him to do things that maybe I couldn't ask of another player that hasn't had that same type of experience. Anyway, I'm just kind of going off on a tangent there. Uh, Gio Reyna, Borussia Dortmund, as I mentioned, hosting Werder Bremen. I don't know if he's going to play or not. I have no goddamn idea, and I don't know if our manager, Edin Tursic, has either. But obviously, all eyes are going to be looking at that 18-man roster, and hopefully he's going to get some valuable minutes and be on the bench and hopefully maybe start at some point so we can get a sharp Gio Reyna coming in to the team. All right, let's go over to, to Spain. Before we get to Yunus Musa, I want to talk about Serginho Dest. Now, Manchester United apparently submitted a bid for him. So I doubt he's suiting up for Barcelona's away game against Real Sociedad, which might be for the best because La Real only gave up nine goals in 19 league games last season. So that could Wait, be another tough, tough also, test for Xavi's you gotta, men. you got to also include Xavi saying, if you want first-team opportunities, you need to leave. That's he, exactly he, right. So, he came out and said that. <laughs> Dest, Dest is leaving. I, You know, it's one thing to say, I'm going to stay here and fight for my place. But if a coach is already making it known that you're not going to play, if, if Xavi said, you know what? Sergino's Xavi's like not... flip-flop though, hasn't he? He's like, oh, I, I, yeah. I, I really he's love like... your game. Uh, he, he, I want you but to But he stay. always prefaced uh, in like what he's yeah. doing now. I love what he's doing now. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like, and if he keeps this up, then, right. and that's just like, that's a, a very gray area to be able to like, well, he didn't keep it up. But, but if, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's a, it's a tease. It, it, yeah. it, I guess it still gives you hope, right? Yeah. As opposed to the coach coming out and saying, you're not, you're not part of the first team. You're not going to play. 
there's a big difference between that and yeah, he's doing well, or I like what he's doing. So you're, you're like, okay, I'll stay and fight. This is Barcelona. I'm not going anywhere. I want to mm-hmm. I want to make my name here. I want to play for this club. But if, as soon as the coach tells you, no matter what you do, basically, you're not going to be playing, then then it's time to go. Right. Okay. And the other game, and I agree with you on that. I think that uh, Sergio Dest's days are numbered. And it feels like he's been like that since Kuman left, that he never really was one of Xavi's guys. Like, all right, we'll put him in because he's got something to him, but that belief that he gives to, let's say, Pedri or Gabi is clear, right? I'm going to develop. I'm going to invest time into this guy. I can see his future. Dest was like, ah, eh, he's kind of one of Kuman's guys. <laughs>